Hello there and welcome to another very special edition of Hashtag Now Smoking. I'm your host, Gary Korb, Executive Editor for StarAdvisor.com. And today, we're going to be smoking Perdomo ESV, that's a state selection vintage, sun-grown imperial. And joining me today is the one and only Nick Perdomo. Gary, how are you? Glad to be here today. Great, Nick. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. And uh, just a few little factoids about the, the cigar. It is a six by 54. It's nice. It's a hefty. It is uh, like a soft box press, I guess you'd call it. Uh, the strength is allegedly medium to full. It is a completely Nicaraguan leaf cigar. It's a puro. It uh, is a Cuban seed Nicaraguan sun grown wrapper. And we'll talk a little bit about the blend with Nick too. And uh, just a couple of things about Perdomo, if you're not familiar with them, and if you're not, you should be ashamed of yourself. Uh, it is uh, family owned and operated since 1992. It's headquartered in Miami, Florida, with agricultural operations in Esteli, Mendega, and Jalapa, Nicaragua. It's fully vertical. Everything that's in the cigar, they control, from the seeds all the way down to the packaging. It's all done at Perdomo's uh, facilities. And here's something interesting. It takes 3,054 steps for Perdomo to make a cigar from planting the seeds to the finished product. I thought that was very interesting. Um, last summer, Nick and his son, Nick, were featured on the cover of Tobacco Business. Very interesting article. So catch that. It's online. And uh, let's talk about the cigar a little bit. The Perdomo Estate Selection Vintage Limited Edition. It's... Uh, handcrafted using the top 5% of Perdomo family's estate-grown tobaccos from the Finca Natalie farm in Esteli, Nicaragua. Did you name the farm after your lovely daughter? I sure did. <laughs> That's very nice. I sure did. And uh, <laughs> they are uh, also made in a, uh, this is a sun grown we're going to smoke and review today, but it is also made in a Connecticut and a Maduro. And just to show you what a hot property these are, the Connecticut and the Sun Grown, which I'm holding, received a 92 in Cigar Journal, and the Maduro got a 94. So very impressive stuff, very impressive company, very impressive man. Nick, tell me a little bit else about the uh, ESV Sun Grown. Nick. Uh, well, we've had, we've had the ESV Sun Grown line and the, the Connecticut and the Maduro line, Gary, for over 21 years. Um, wow. every, every cycle we have. Uh, what we call our estate crop, and the newest one is the one you're smoking today. What's unique about this one? It has a, you notice, it has a slight box press. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Here's here's the box right here, so you get. It's the, beautiful. By the way, the packaging's fantastic. Thank you. I, I just think a, I just think a box of cigars is special, and this cigar is extremely special because just what you said, it utilizes the top five percent of our crop. Uh, one of our, our, our famed farms is called Natalie, named after my daughter, which was at one time a crater of a volcano. And the uh -huh. first crop that we grew there seven years ago, the secos, which are our light tobaccos, and the lijeros, which are our heavy tobaccos, are actually the first tobaccos that we cultivated that was used in a cigar that's, that's being inside the fillers here on the mm. U.S. State Selection Vintage Box Press. We only have 133 stores that carry it. Uh, famous, I think, is, is carrying it now, which is great. Oh, yeah. We're going to open up 25 more stores, and we've been super happy with the, with the response to the cigar. The cigar is wonderful, but you know, like anything, it's, it has to be hand-sold because it's so, there's so few retailers that actually have the, the brand that we really wanted to pick the very best around the country that would go back and, and hand-sell these products because they're so unique and uh, I really don't like very much limited edition products, to say the least, but yeah. this is one I thought was so special. And um, we have enough tobacco for this to do about 4.7 million cigars. So we're, okay. we're, yeah, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to produce, or we're trying to really sell 750,000 cigars per year. It's a small production. And that way it'll give us about six years of production so people can get to enjoy the cigar for the years to come. Okay. So the major change is the, the box pressing, yes, and the uh, the uh, beautiful um, bands and the packaging. Everything. All right. So what I'm going to do is uh, what we usually do is we inspect the cigar, and I can tell you right now, when you were talking, I was inspecting it a little bit. It is absolutely packed perfectly all the way. You have kind of like that flat cap on there. I kind of like that too. Yeah, it it, uh, it it was something that we we designed with a, with a special mold. We wanted us 
not a real sharp box press like we've done with the old Perdomo reserves, but something what we call the soft box press. Yeah. And, uh, our consumers that, and our retailers around the country have been really happy with it. We've been super happy with the response of the cigar. And uh, 2020, thank God, has been a pretty good year for us, with, even with all that's happening. And a lot of it has, yeah, to, do with, a lot of it has to do with guys like you. I mean, the, to be honest with you, all the consumers out there that, that, have, that have gotten through and, uh, you know, been supporting our company for the last 29 years, you know, going mm -hmm. into our third decade here pretty soon. So. Well, that's great. That's great. And I, I got to tell you, I just, I just clipped it and uh, the draw is perfect. It's excellent. And I'm getting like kind of a, I don't know, like a, a, a little bit of like a leather and cocoa flavor almost, like a kind of a chocolatey taste. Yeah, it's got a lot of sweet tobaccos from the Jalapa mm. Valley, and you're going to really feel some real pronounced flavors from, from that Natalie farm where the tobacco there is just so lush. It's unbelievable. We're, uh, we're blessed to have that farm. Now, is the Sun Grown Wrapper, you know, I, I'm, I'm crazy for your Sun Grown stuff. Is, is, is the Sun Grown Wrapper a Jalapa, or do you not want to say? Or? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, this particular wrapper comes from Jalapa Valley. It's our six primings. It's our, our top of the leaf. It's what we call mm. the Corona leaf. And we can't make many cigars with that because they have the most sun exposure. So those are the most thickest and coarsest wrappers. But if, but if you look at these cigars, they're almost seamless. And that's really the body of our work with our wrapper department. They just do a wonderful job hand selecting these wrappers. But, you know, mm -hmm. the best, we're getting about 11 to 12 percent of these wrappers in the sun that we can put on these cigars. That's why the production's so small. But it's a special cigar. When you light up, I think you're going to see it. It's gorgeous. All right, well, we're going to do that. I'm going to light it up using the Nick Perdomo lighting method, <laughs> which is where we're going to go around the perimeter of the butt and get that real good. I had to get a different lighter because the other lighter I have is a four jet and it just destroys everything instantly. So I want to do this right. I, I got to send you the new Perdomo lighter that actually you charge it with a USB oh. and it's direct. So, which is really cool. Right. Mm, wow. This first few puffs. I got it perfect. Ta da. Nice and smooth, mellow. Goes good with a single malt scotch or a nice coffee, I tell you. Either one. You know? We got the Macallan. Uh, lucky you. 12 years. <laughs> I don't have much left. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm at the office with my guys out in front of me. They 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 like to dab in their uh in their in their sky. Yeah, I know that's very lounge, popular. So. Balvini. Yeah, Balvini. I like that a lot. Yeah. You know a what I? Guys, a lot of my guys out here drink a lot of Johnny Walker Blue. They all these police officers out here have a lot of money. You know. I'm, <laughs> I'm striving well, to be like these guys where I can afford a bottle of Johnny Walker Blue. <laughs> Well, look at this. Look at the volume of smoke, and uh, it's, it's, the draw is perfect. Just real so, chewy smoke, just really it's, delicious. It's got a lot of flavor, doesn't it? Love the, yeah, I just love it. And, you know, it's flavorful right from the get-go, and it's, it's, I'm getting a little bit of pepper, a little bit up in the nose, kind of sure. trickled up there, and uh, it's just a great experience, I'll tell you. Now, um, I, we were talking about the box pressing. Did you say you use a mold? No, we have a special mold for the heads and we we box press them but with a slight box press for a longer amount of time. It actually takes us almost six and a half hours to box press this cigar to the way we want them. And we want them extremely uniform because we want them to fit in the box that we actually manufacture. So the tolerances are are very fine. So we want every cigar to be parallel and uniform. So yeah. every box press is perfect. This is really nice. So um, I noticed that uh, what, that you also, while I was doing my research, you have a new website. We do. Or at least you revamped it. And, yeah, we uh, revamped it. Yeah, we're real proud of it. It's uh, www.perdomacigars.com. Thank you for mentioning it. We've got a lot of people getting on it. A lot of this stuff is about information, where they can find our products around the country. And all the information on all the different cigars we make, it was done professionally with a great, with a, with a great video guy and photographer. And uh, we started getting into, you know, we did something with you several years ago, and we talked about lighting and cutting cigars. It's crazy. We had over 1.1 million views, and I can't tell you how many people around the world have told me they saw, they learned how to cut and light a cigar 
from uh, you know from from the cigar advisor, and um, it, it's been it's been great for us. And we decided we have, we would open up a YouTube channel under Perdomo Cigars. We just mm -hmm. started with that. That's been fantastic. And I wanted to do the same thing like you were talking about, Gary, where we really wanted to teach people like you do all the, all the correct ways of not only cutting and lighting a cigar to be getting the most out of their cigar, the proper humidification, aging, and so on. And it's been a big winner for us. We just started a, a couple months ago, and uh, we just had a video go out five days ago. We had over 10,000 views, which I've been, I've been really happy with in one week. And uh, we just had one that came out yesterday. And uh, that got 4,100 views so far in one day. And it seems to really be caring. And you guys kind of, uh, kind of were the leaders of that. And uh, we're trying to emulate it and show, show people, you know, as far as cigar makers, what I think is the best way to enjoy a cigar. I think it's the right way. You know? Yeah, I was on the site this morning and I, I noticed it's a lot of how-to stuff. Yes. So I guess, you know, um, should we consider you a competitor? I don't know. Uh, no, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say a competitor, but I want to teach. You know, one of the things we do when when guys come on our factory tour is we all get together that first night and after dinner. I always ask guys, would you like to learn how to properly cut and line a cigar? And I don't care if the guy's been smoking a cigar for three days or thirty years; mm -hmm. they're always interested. And that's true. And you know better than anybody. You get a, you get a lot more enjoyment out of your cigar if you do it correctly. And a lot of guys don't do it correctly. It's not their fault. They get a lot of bad information. Um, your information is, is, is paramount. It's, it's spot on. But a lot of the information you see from these guys, it's not. And I wanted to do something like that where people would get more enjoyment out of their cigars. And uh, I think if people get more enjoyment, we're going we're gonna to get a lot more cigar smokers and people are going to enjoy their cigars a lot more. That's good. And speaking of enjoying your cigars more, there is actually a video there, I think, called How to Enjoy Your Cigars More. And, and it's something that I always talk about, too, which is just smoke the cigar slowly take your time try to pick up those little nuances and things and um you know just 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 you know just just enjoy the smoke for what it is don't like you know, hit an eye yeah, yeah it's, it's not a race it's a marathon and, right <laughs> I'm, starting, I'm starting to see guys around lounges all over i have a lounge here in our office here in miami and and i i look at our guys and the way they smoke and you could see they enjoy the cigars and they know what they're doing they you know where a lot of times you go around and people are welding the cigars like I call them torching the heck out of them and not, you know they're always they're always in such a big hurry and this is about sitting down on the sofa relaxing you know just vegging out and enjoying cigars and mm -hmm. they're celebratory you know right well that's what we try to do here and you know I think sometimes because I'm doing this video and you know we only have so much time I sometimes I think I tend to rush some of the cigars which I I feel a little uh you know funny about because I'm always telling people you know don't rush it but sure it's just um I don't know, sometimes the cigar is just so good, I just can't help but keep, uh, you know, tapping on it. I, I'm, known, I'm known to do that myself. But, you know, being in the cigar industry, you're blessed because there's always a cigar behind you there that you can always light up and enjoy, too. That's one of the perks about being in the cigar industry, as you well know. You look like you're sitting in a sea of Perdomo cigars there. <laughs> yeah, well, th this behind me here is kind of our R&D. We have a lot of our local retailers here in South Florida. They come uh -huh. and pick up their cigars from the factory, and we show them how to properly merchandise the product. That's a big thing for us. We've oh, been doing okay, this yeah. for about eight years, and uh, it's it's what really has taken us over the top in really showing the cigars how they should be placed and merchandised. You know, when I got in the cigar business, I, I looked, and I was kind of dismayed when I looked at presentations because my dad was in business, and he always thought, you know, presentation was super important. And I followed companies like him and Procter and Gamble and Kimberly Clark and Coca Cola, and we started this, like I said, eight years ago, and it really catapulted our business. You know, first it was us eating S chip, which we still do to this day, and then properly merchandising our products, and uh, it's been a big win for us. And listen, Gary, you and I are friends, but you you know my company real well. We've been friends a long time, and you you've seen a lot of the stuff we've done throughout the years. Yeah, and I'll tell you, 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 you've been really good with that, too. I mean, the prices are probably some of the fairest in the business. I mean, this, now this is, this is not, let's you know, be honest here, this is not a cheap cigar. It's a 1250 cigar MSRP. Yeah, it's, it's, so it's, it's a lot of cigar, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's got the good stuff. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, expect that. Yeah, a lot of people charge you $30 for a cigar like that. I mean, <laughs> listen, true. you know it, you're, you're in the industry. I mean, mm -hmm. look, um, 
we're a, we're a manufacturer, a vertical manufacturer. We pass that savings on to our consumers. Our consumers see it. They smoke cigars that cost twice as much, and a lot of them come up to me and say, "My God, a, a seven dollar lot twenty three was better than this twenty one dollar cigar I smoked." And yeah, that always brings a smile to your face because, listen, at my at my stage of my career, the only thing I care about is that my customers are happy, my retailers are happy, and they're confident in selling our products. We really don't advertise, and um, how we built you know, such a big company was through guys like you and through all the consumers out there and all the retailers and all the catalog companies that who support us. I mean, Famous has been carrying our brand since, you know, Arthur had his store in New York City. I'll never forget yeah. that. Yeah. That was so, before my cool. time too. Yeah. But um, it's time to find out what you're tasting. What, how, how's, what are you tasting in your cigar now? What are you getting? Well, look, I, um, I, I'm a big purveyor of a solid core of tobacco and sweetness. So Nicaragua has some, some virtues that most countries don't have because of our fertile grounds. Mm -hmm. um, the tobaccos, for example, the sweetness you taste, those tobaccos come from a very heavily mineral laden ground up in the Jalapa Valley where it brings a lot of sweetness. Those tobaccos, when you smell them, they smell almost like honey wheat bread. They have a lot of sugar concentration. Together with, with some of the more earthy tobaccos from the Condega Valley, and with the more bold tobaccos that we have from, from the Esteli Valley that you're smoking there, when you coincide all those and you make a dosage or a blend, you really can make a lot of complexity and, and flavors. I always call them layering and flavors. Right, yeah. That I'm looking at. They're layers of flavors. I'm a scotch drinker myself, so <laughs> I always try to pair things that pair well with scotches and bourbons. Uh, if you're a wine guy, big red cabs, mm -hmm. um, which, which I like. Um, I'm an equal opportunity drinker, so I, I like I like I like good sipping tequilas, dark rums, also, <clears throat> and I'm also a, a lover of a good coffee, and uh, I I I try to pair everything, regardless of wrapper, right. to have more bold, richer, sweeter type flavors to pair with those, and a lot of creaminess with Connecticut shade wrappers that not only do we bring in, but we cure and re-age and re-ferment again to bring that creaminess out, bringing that solid core of tobacco out and the same thing with our maduro wrappers people really like our, our maduro wrappers because they're naturally sweet we don't steam them or cook them we mm. age them it takes a long time you know what i mean and yeah, yeah. You know, this is a business that you have to be patient with and you have to think about your consumer and what he likes because a lot of times i come out with cigars it's not necessarily what i like but it's what i think a lot of the consumer would like really and yeah today um a little Isn't later, when you're ready, I want to show you a couple new cigars that we're going to come yeah. out with that nobody really has, has gotten a scene. But my friend Gary Corb invites me to a show. I figured, let me show some of our well, new stuff. You, you definitely want to know about that. Now, the ash is absolutely wonderful on this. It's, it's almost solid gray. It's yeah. very firm. Uh, I'm going to just, just test it right here. Oh, yeah, it's very firm. I, I didn't want to knock it off. But um, I'm getting a lot of that nice, that oakiness and that and a sweetness of us, like a little bit of sweet spice, some nutmeg in there, and it's just... Uh, the oak that you're tasting there is from the barrel aging that we use on the wrappers. That particular wrapper there has been barrel aged for 10 months after yeah. complete fermentation. And what happens is with those oak barrels, the alcohol residue inside mm -hmm. actually gives them another fermentation. It helps give them a darker cask of colors. That's why you see that reddish brown color that you see there on that wrapper. If you look yeah, at the burn line by the ash, you'll see it's very thin because it's it's been fermented 100%. Yeah. You, can see, you can see that our agronomy team did a great job using the right potassium and, uh, and, and phosphorus and nitrogen to keep that ash nice and white and solid because our, our guys really do a great job. It's our greatest asset, it's our workforce in Nicaragua mm -hmm. together with our workforce here in the States. So they do a wonderful job. You, know, you have pretty, you have a pretty high tech operation over there in terms of your uh, your fields and stuff. What are some of the things that uh, what are the things that you do now? Uh, you know, with high tech, so to speak, uh, that you had to do like either by hand or you know some other way. In the um, old days, we'd get a farm, we'd take a soil plug, and we'd bring them to a lab, and we would get our formulas. Mm -hmm. Today, we work with a German company, and what we do now is we do everything through satellite and, and satellite imagery and through heat sensing with drones, and we can actually fly over the farms and pick up the different elements of, and micro elements of what the farm needs 
to the actual tea through picking up through heat. So, for That's example, the, yeah, it is a main. The Natalie farm <laughs> has 63 different fertilizers, or three, 63 different fertilizations that, that that farm needs. For example, if you're down by the river and mm -hmm. I'm 10 feet above you, you're going to be a little more loamy because you have water underneath, you know. Okay. So those grounds are going to be lighter. So if I use a, a dosage or a blend on that lot number, I would never interchange it with the lot number that could be only 10 yards upstream from it because it's going to be more powerful tobacco. And we blend tobaccos. One of the things we used to do is we take tobaccos from the Esalí Valley, the Jalapa Valley, and we'd say, okay, we're going to make a blend of this and this. Today, we do everything by number series. We do everything. We're going to take Secos from, from Esteli and Lot 14. We're going to combine it with Visa from Pendega from Lot 107. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to take tobacco from Alapa with, with this particular lot number, with this binder from a lot number, and from that wrapper. And the reason that we can zero in so much is because of the technology, and that's how we can have a consistent cigar that tastes the same. So if a guy likes a 20th anniversary Maduro, it's mm -hmm. consistent time and time. I, I know guys, and I listen to their input, and they always say, you know, I, I smoked this particular cigar. I loved it. I smoked the next one. It was totally different. Yep. I never wanted that from my consumers. And these are some of the technological things that we've been able to do with some of our partners. For example, water. You know, we'd have, we, would, we, would, we would water over the top like you've seen there. Now we water underground, and now we have a drip system. We have a drip system that was designed by a company in Israel for us where we can actually take the water droplets and put fertilizer in each water droplet that goes directly into the root base. It was a huge investment with the company, but just this year we saved over 601,000 gallons of water just on the Natalie farm, and we've been able to drive that water directly to the plant and not have so much erosion. We got to conserve a lot of good water. And uh, just different things like that. A great genetic department I have where we've developed two or three new seeds that we've had. And um, all this technology has been great. But I'll, I'll be honest with you, Gary, even with all the technology, a lot of things my dad taught me, we still do because I haven't found anything that's better. So technology is yeah. great. But sometimes some of the stuff that I get, I get you know, tried to sold on, I, I, don't, I don't like it because I don't see it being efficient. Or mm -hmm. I don't see it that it's going to make it better for our crops, so I choose mm -hmm. not to use it. But technology is, is definitely mm -hmm. a big part of the Perdomo game. And people, when they come to visit us, they're surprised when they see a lot of the stuff we do. It's just different, you know, and it, it makes the product better. And that's what we're here for. Well, I'll tell you one thing. They are very consistent. You know, I smoke a lot of your 20th anniversary Sun Grown in the Epicure, which I think is the same size. Yes. And very similar cigar, actually. And... Um, and they're always, they're always consistent. You know, and I always tell people, you know, uh, there tends to be, I've, every time I bought a box of cigars, there tends to be one in there that's terrible. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> it's, I call it the clunker in the box, you know. But um, I found that, that your cigars have been very consistent. So I, I want to ask you a question that people have asked me. Uh, so I'm going to ask you. Okay. Uh, you know, most of your high-end cigars are made with three wrappers. You have your Connecticut, yeah. your Sun Grown, and your Maduro. Is, what's the reason for that? That you don't, you just kind of stick with those three wrappers? I think that those are the, the three big, uh, best cuts of meat. I think they're filet mignon, bone-in ribeye, and, and, a, and a porterhouse. And uh -huh. I think that, really, I think that if someone loves the 20th anniversary blend, and let's say he's looking for something a little more creamier in that blend, well, he can smoke the 20th anniversary Connecticut. If he's okay. looking for a little more spice, whether it be in the morning, middle of the day, or night, he can smoke. He could smoke the sun grown. If he's looking for a little bit of sweetness, he's having a nice dinner with a big dessert or, 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 or a nice glass of scotch. He can also enjoy the Maduro. A lot of times, I smoke the Maduro in the morning with a cup of coffee, and what it mm -hmm. does is it, it keeps everybody interested in the actual blend, regardless of which Perdomo cigar they are. Hence, that's why we've come up with these three of our best the best wrappers we think that exist in the different blends. And what it's done, it's kept people consistently into the line of cigars. So if you look at a brand like Perdomo Habano, Bourbon Barrel Age, it's been out for 19 years. If you look at the Reserve Champagne, it's going on its 20th year, its second decade, a uh, lot 23, 21 years. I mean, we've had a lot of brands that have been out for decades, and I think people out there want consistency. And with those different types of wrappers, 
for example, a guy who likes 20th anniversary, he can try the Connecticut Enjoy. He can try the Sun Grown Enjoy. I see a lot of my guys that come into our store here in Miami, you know, pedal around and smoke you know, different types of cigars. A lot of times I'll come up and say, hey, guys, try this. Mm -hmm. They can tell me because they smoke all the different wrappers. You know what I mean? Right. And the wrappers are going to accent the flavors, but in a different way. And people want to try different things. I don't need bone-in ribeyes every day. Sometimes I'll have a filet. Sometimes I'll have a porterhouse. I'll have something different. And I think the cigar smoker is deserving of that also. Hence, that's why we, we do the three wrappers and all the different cigars that we make. And it's been a winner for us. I'm glad you mentioned that. And I'm just getting into the uh, best part of the first act, as I call it. And it's just so creamy. And so, I, you know, I guess I, what, the word I'm trying to comes to mind is it's very open. You know, it's like all the flavors just come in, you know, just bang, 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 you know, just really nice, but all like very smooth. You know, it's just, it's just so, so well balanced. You know, that's, that's the thing I like too. And you hit it right on the head. That's what we're looking at. We're looking for layers of flavors, a lot of balance when you smoke that cigar from beginning to end. And we want consistent flavor all the way down to you, what I always call mustache burners, all the way down to the end. I really think that the consumer gets a lot of bang for their buck when they could be able to enjoy that cigar from start to finish. And that's mm -hmm. something that we really, um, really strive for. You know, we, we talk about ratings a lot of times. And I always say the toughest guys who, who are raiders are really our in-house guys. I mean, if you, <laughs> if you go down to Nicaragua and you look at, you know, Aristides Garcia and you look at Sarah Gonzalez and Miguel Rivera mm -hmm. and, so, and all of our, 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 our group down there, you know, we have over almost close to 400 years of smoking experience. So my, my uh, circle of trust there is probably the hardest judge guys you'll ever meet. And that's why a lot of times it takes us so long to come up with a cigar for two reasons. One, I think the retailers have enough. Two, I think the consumers have so many decisions to make. And three, what we want to do is we want to satisfy our consumers. So hence, that's why it takes us a long time to come out with a new cigar. I really don't know how people can come out with so many different cigars all at one time. I, maybe I'm just not smart enough to do that. But you know, when we come out with a brand, we really concentrate, really think it really through strategically how that brand's going to be around for decades to come. And I always tell people, if you want to smoke something new, smoke what's trusted and it's been sold by the millions. I was, uh, I tell this story a lot. I was recently in South Miami before all this happened with a friend of mine and the guy recognized me. I was in the lounge smoking a cigar and he said, I've been, I've been smoking your cigars for 20 years. Anything new? And I said, sure. I had a big wall of Perdomo like you got behind here. It was in a store called Sephora Habana in mm -hmm. South Miami. And I said, um, have you ever smoked a Perdomo Reserve Champagne? He said, no, I haven't. And I said, well, it's new for you. And it's a brand that's been out for almost 20 years. And we've sold close to probably 80 million of those cigars. And people love them. So I never wanted to buy the first model of a boat or a car, because that's where you're going to have all your things and defects. Uh -huh. We give you something that's time, time and proven. And if you look at this portfolio behind me, Gary, not mm -hmm. everybody has smoked every cigar that I've made. So there's always something new to somebody. But I've always wanted to buy, you know, the best that I could afford. And um, I like Coke and Diet Coke. I don't really care about strawberry flavored Fanta all the time. It just seems like everybody's looking into the new. I just say, look at what's reputable, what sells and what's consistent. There's a lot of great cigar makers out there. And if I was a cigar smoker, I'd, I'd stick to the, to the staples, in my opinion. And I think that's why your company's been extremely successful. They're taking chances on guys that are, they were new like me. They were they were boutique guys. I started out in my garage, but mm -hmm, they had that's an inclination. Right. Yeah, they had an inclination. Hey, this guy's going to be in business, and uh, that's why you're 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 you know, famous and so successful. And granted, they're deservingly. They they work for their consumers really hard too. Well, Arthur likes uh, my Arthur, of course, <laughs> not your Arthur. Um, likes to have what he calls the long tail. He likes to be able to give you know have something you know have a lot of uh, selection. And we do have a lot of selection at, at famous-smoke.com. And um, you know what else? I just, I just um, retrohaled this, and it's really smooth. It's not that peppery. It's a little bit of pepper, but it's just really enjoyable. Uh, get probably a little bit more of the oak in, in the retrohale. How about you? I, I get it, too. I don't get as much pepper as I get, for example, in the 20th. And the reason yeah. is these tobaccos are older. And oh, okay. what happens is it's no different than scotch, you know, 
I, if I blindfold you, and I gave you a bottle of MD 2020, you'd say, wow, this is really strong, but it's rod cut. And if you, you drink, you know, if you drink, a, a, you know, a Macallan or, or something like that, they're well aged and they're oak barrels and they're smoother. And I think what we're trying to teach a lot of the smokers now is the difference between flavor and strength. I can make a cigar with raw tobacco that will make your eyes water, but it's not going to be enjoyable. And what we're looking for is richness and layers of flavors, like we were just saying earlier. Well, and I, I'm also, I also agree with you on the fact that I just think there, well, I guess you, I don't I, I think I too think there's so many cigars and on the market, it's almost impossible. I mean, you couldn't smoke them all in your lifetime. And I don't know how they keep coming out with them too, but they, they do. I mean, uh, you know, it's just, I guess people like choice, obviously, but, sure. uh, you know, I, I'm kind of like, maybe because I'm getting older, I just kind of like to settle into some things that I enjoy all the time. I know when I go for it, it's going to be good. And, um, you know, of course, I have to smoke a lot of the new stuff, too. That's part of my job. But, sure. you know, I'm just, I guess I'm getting to the point where I just want to smoke a cigar and enjoy it for what it is. I'd have to think about it too much, you know. I, I agree with you 100%. Look, I smoke everything. People ask me, do I smoke other people's cigars? I say all the time, you know what I mean? I don't know how good my stuff is, if I don't. But I'm starting to see a lot of stuff is very linear. It's all the same, All it seems like, a lot. And there's some, mm. some, some great cigars out there, too, that I've smoked. But, um, you know, I, I, I'm the same way, you know, whether it be clothes or shoes or stuff. Whatever works is where I kind of stay consistent with because I know it's it's good quality and I'm happy with it. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I don't veer off too much. It's like I live in Miami. We got tens of thousands of restaurants. I go to the same five all the time because I know they're great. You know, so uh, I, I'm I'm in agreement with you on that. Yeah, and I'll tell you right now, as I'm just getting through the first stack, uh, it started the body starting to get a little stronger, you know, a little more more full, I guess you could say. Yeah. But the, uh, let's on. those core flavors are still right in there. It's, re- it's I'll tell you, it's really, really tasty. I got to ask you a question. Sure. You know, since you brought up the, uh, or you alluded to this whole thing with the virus that's going around, uh, how, how's that affected, uh, if any, your, your factory operations and stuff? I know it's affected the sales. Yeah, we're it, was, anywhere, it, it really didn't affect us at all in the sense that we never closed. We made, we did all the measures that, 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 that the, the doctors have, have asked us to do. Um, you know, we have a doctor on board. We've had, right. nobody gets sick. We never closed one day. We actually have another factory we opened up 18 months ago for stock. We've had that factory for 18 months. We've never sold one of the cigars. We just, they're, they're put in aging rooms to, to continue our stock. And mm-hmm. um, we've been blessed, not only here in Miami, but our sales force around the United States knock on wood, they've been healthy. I, I told my workers from the beginning that if they didn't want to work, whether it was from working at home or they, they chose not to, the company would pay them. We told our workforce in Nicaragua the same thing. We've been blessed that every one of our workers said, no, we want to work, Nick. And I've been blessed. And I think the reason that our workers wanted to work was because, um, look, the average worker has been at Perdomo Cigars for 19.4 years. Wow. Yeah, we have an amazing workforce. It's been very loyal to us and loyal to the consumers out there. And uh, they stepped it up. And, you know, in the middle of growing season when this happened, you know, we were we were frightened about that. And luckily, we're blessed that nobody not only not got sick, but um, we continued manufacturing cigars at, at 100% capacity. Someone's offered me a little scotch. If Gary's drinking, well, I got I to gotta have a little shot. Too. Yeah. I'm and gonna, then, uh, and then, very soon, I'm going to be hitting that. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, as far as business, I I'm almost feel guilty to say it because I know a lot of guys have struggled, but uh, we had a, a record January, February, March, April, and right now in May, we're up almost 12.38%. Um, I felt really bad about our brick and mortar stores. You know, they're the bulk of our business. Yeah. I know how tough it is, whether it be cigar stores or restaurants. I think everybody's essential. Um, I, I didn't understand what was not essential. I think that everybody who, who works hard and makes a living is essential. I don't care if you sell cigars or sell, you know, broken flowers. If that's your livelihood, you're essential. It's easy for politicians to tell people they're not essential when they continue getting a paycheck. Um, <laughs> You know, I don't want to get political, but to me, no. not essential is Chuck Schumer and Nancy mm-hmm. Pelosi. They were two <laughs> most unessential. I could say Mitch McConnell for that matter too. And um, I'm glad I'm glad we're getting we're getting beyond this. 
Yeah. Um, uh, I would have done it differently. I'm not a doctor, but I have a friend of mine who's an infectious guy from Johns Hopkins. And yeah. I would have took the people and made it their choice. If you're 70 and above, we recommend you quarantine. Guys that are younger, right. that are healthy, that don't have any pre-existing conditions, mm -hmm. I think you should work. Um, see, see, how, see how good my guys are here? Look, thank you. <laughs> there you go. You, Gary Corb. I'm going to have a drink. This is all. I'm, I'm going to toast you in a minute. I just want I'm going to get the, uh, take the ESV band off. Okay. And look at that. Little, and little you know, Lamarage, you're one of my favorites. I'm about to catch up to you right now. Okay. Oh. But we've we've had we've had an incredible 2020, and our, our retailers who were curbside, we did a lot of things for them. We we helped them out. We ran specials, which, which we never do in, in the months of March and April. Mm -hmm. um, we did that so they could build more margin because we know how much they're struggling. The rents never stop. The paychecks never right. stopped. And um, we wanted to help them. We did. Our, our partners in the catalog business sure grew tremendously. And uh, they rewarded us through through lots of buys because a lot of guys couldn't even go to their stores to buy cigars because they were closed. Yeah. So um, we said, we, we, look, I'm, I'm the optimist. I'm the optimist, Gary. I, I see the glass half full like Ronald Reagan always said. And yeah. I see us <laughs> getting too. better. Yeah, I see us getting better for this. And I see our economy turning around. I see people smoking more and more cigars right now, especially when they were quarantined. They were probably out of their minds and mm -hmm. they were enjoying more single malt scotches and more cigars than they probably ever had. And uh, business was good. And I'm glad that, that we made the decision not to close. And our sales team, they worked from home. A lot of them were pulling their hair out of their head because they, they want to be out there visiting their accounts. And I'll be right. quite honest with you. I had seven of my flights that were canceled. And uh, I, I really miss seeing all you guys out there, you know, whether it be consumers, cigar lounges, retailers, my friend, Gary Corb, uh, <laughs> anybody, but we're doing a, we're doing a get together in August up, up at your place at Easton. And we're looking forward oh, to that. Man. And um, we, we, I start traveling here in two weeks and uh, I'm going to hit it hard. And uh, look, I, I, I try to take care of myself the best I can. God's given me antibodies. And uh, with all my travels around the world, I've probably picked up everything you could think of. And thank God I've been super healthy. I just got my Corona test uh, today because I, oh, I, did. I did a physical. And uh, my doctor said he's tested uh, 418 people. Wow. And uh, he's been uh, 418 out of 418 with nobody testing positive for it. And, uh, and I'm happy about hearing that. So uh, things are good. I just want you to know, speaking of I got some McAllen 12 here. And um, I'm well, going I'll, to join I'll join you. you. My friends over here just poured me a little bit of uh, Glen Morange, which I like too. I like both of them. Okay. Well, I love this Macallan 12. You know what else I really like? Have you had any of the Japanese scotches? Outstanding. Aren't Outstanding. they great? Fantastic. All right. So, salute. Salute to, to you, Gary, and everybody out here in the audience. Let's see how it goes with you. Oh, that's nice. Let's see how it is with the cigar. Watch. It pairs really well. Hmm. Wow, opens that baby right up, huh? <laughs> sure does. Sure does. Yeah, I love this stuff. Yeah, yeah those Japanese scotches are great. I, I want to ask you a question that I've been meaning to ask someone like you, um, because you've been in the business. You've been in the business a long time, and um, I don't necessarily mean you in terms of your, the way you do, you know, make cigars. But are, are Cuban cigars still the model for uh, you know for the flavor profile? You know, you see this all the time. It's very Cubanesque. It's, you know, made like the old Cuban cigar. Would it, you know, I mean, does that matter anymore? Uh, absolutely not. It's, a, it, you know, listen, my family's from Cuba. They were great cigar right. makers. Mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the 30s and 40s and 50s, Cuba made great cigars. But my dad said something one time I'll never forget. God rest his soul. He said, you know what? We never had Nicaragua back then. If we did, I don't know if <laughs> cigars would have been the best. Even back then, when they were privately held entities, you know, with communism, it destroys everything. Um, everybody knows what's happening in Cuba right now with their quality issues and fermentation and grounds mm -hmm. not being rotated and so on. And we're seeing, ex uh, you know, exponential growth around the world. Uh, I remember going to Germany 18 years ago and you wouldn't even find a non-Cuban cigar in a cigar store. I was in Germany yeah. last year and there were a lot of stores that had very few Cuban cigars and a lot of what they call Caribbean cigars in there. Mm -hmm. And they've gotten to see that a lot of the great masters and a lot of the great guys that that made cigars in Cuba left and they went That's to right. the Republic Honduras and Nicaragua. So it's a, a traditional thing. It's more of a marketing ploy. It's like a Cuban seed, you know, uh, 
Nicaragua has been developing seeds since 1960 with some of the great genetic people from, from Cuba that, that moved to Nicaragua. So, um, you know, I'll leave it at that. I, uh, I, I will say that I'm a huge fan of tobacco from Nicaragua. Nicaragua has a couple of variables that nobody has. They have mm -hmm. volcanic grounds right. that are very important, which are free of lead, which is very unique. Nicaragua mm -hmm. means never without water. We have an abundant supply of clean water. We have beautiful valleys that block the wind that allow the tobacco to grow. We get sunshine between 12 and 14 hours, and we grow in the drought. So what we do is we water from underneath, and none of our leaves get live water on them. So what happens is you don't wash any of the oils or the resins or the grease, which is the flavor. And that's what makes Nicaragua so unique. And also, we're not in one valley. We're in different valleys. For example, mm -hmm. in Esteli, a um, hundred miles north of me, I have Jalapa, totally different type tobaccos. In between there, I have the Condega Valley, which is more cloud cover. So I can make a lot of different combinations and different flavors of cigars that'll interest not only the cigar smoker, but the cigar lover alike. So Nicaragua is really a blessing. And in my personal opinion, it's the mm -hmm. finest tobacco in the world and we're seeing it everywhere. I remember when I first started, people said, what's Nicaragua? I said, you'll soon see. And I said one day years ago in Cigar Ficcionado, I said that Nicaragua would bypass Honduras one day, and I remember people laughed at me at that article. And then one day I said it would even bypass the Dominican. Well, Nicaragua's not only bypassed Honduras, it bypassed the Dominican and Honduras combined with imports. So Americans are seeing how special Nicaraguan tobacco is, and so is the rest of the world. And I'm really proud of that because I always push Nicaragua hard, and I got made fun of for it. But we uh, see now that everybody wants tobacco from Nicaragua. It's truly special. I know. It's unbelievable. Every other cigar comes out now. It's like the blank Nicaragua. You know, like yeah. I just got a, a new cigar from another company, and it's the blank Nicaragua, you know. <laughs> and, it, and it's so, not even from, it's probably not even a maker from Nicaragua. We, we were at the Cigar Trophies with Cigar Journal, which is a, a magazine I have a, a lot of respect for. And they, they rate cigars from all over the world with a panel mm -hmm. of 70 different smokers where you really get in the a variance in ratings yeah, and um, during during the uh during the awards uh, uh perdomo habano uh or perdomo 20th anniversary won best brand of the year and i said i'm so proud i said this is the first cigar that's that says nicaragua that's actually made in nicaragua because it was <laughs> this brand from the Dominican republic nicaragua this brand from honduras from nicaragua everything was from had nicaragua on the on the sub band and uh I was proud of that because I have a big love for Nicaragua. We've been there since 1995, and uh, my dad was really instrumental in us coming to Estelí that August of 95. And I remember when I first got there, I was like, why are we here? We didn't even have running water. My dad used to always point to the ground and said, look at the grounds. That's why we're here. And God rest his soul, my dad was 100% right on that. We're proud that we're there. Hey, let me ask you about that. You know, you have a cigar called Lot 23. Mm -hmm. And Lot 23, I think you discovered... Uh, you know, it had all this natural, like a virgin plot of land that had great natural fertilizing in it, you know, or, or great soil, which is rich soil. And uh, now it's been a long time since you, you know, developed that plot. How does, has it changed at all? Has it, you know, had a, well, it has a little bit because you gotta remember, we've been growing on that plot for 21 years, but we let it rest every year for one full year. And what happened was I wanted to do like a single vineyard, like a wine. So I had yeah. two, two different varieties of seeds. I topped them off at four feet, real stout, so I could get some stout tobacco. We couldn't produce enough wrapper. And that story's pretty interesting. It has a lot to do with single malt scotch. My dad was drinking scotch with the bishop of the church, and there was this big <laughs> plot of land in the back, and my dad said, what are you going to do with that? He said, I don't know. We're going to put all those boys out there probably to grow some fruits and vegetables. My yeah. dad said, let us take some soil analysis. We'll clean all that up and I'll give you a long lease of you know, 30 years and let us try to grow on that. Let me see how it is. My dad, it was bionic. The grounds the first three years, we didn't even use fertilizer in it. And what I was most proud of is those 81 kids that worked there, 73 of them still work for us 20 years later. How do you like that? Yeah, because wow. my dad gave the word. And that's probably one of the most unappreciated brands because my dad said, let's make a quick nickel, not a slow dime on this. I want a lot of people to buy this brand and I want to make it very inexpensive. It's our lowest margin product. It's mm. only seven, eight dollars, but it, it'll rival anything that costs 12 and 15 dollars. It's a phenomenal cigar. And uh, the only thing that's different today is we've amplified the grounds a little more and um, mm. we've had to put more nutrients in it, of course, because the tobacco absorbs nutrients, but the grounds right. are still beautiful because 
we only grow 90 days out of the year on that farm. That's it. One growing wow. cycle and that's it. We let it let, lay fallow and that way we can incorporate more organic material and keep that farm extremely fertile. Yeah, so, so you're, that, that's, that's smart. You don't grow anything in the meantime, you just let it sit? I let all my farms sit and we develop all our own farms. Every farm that we grow on, we're virgin before we grew them, including Natalie. And the reason we wanted to do that is because at the end, it's much more expensive, but you get much better tobacco. And when you look at your yields, it pays for itself. I don't grow a cover crop because cover crops cause damage to tobacco. A lot of people tell you grow beans. Well, yeah, beans will give you more nitrogen, but beans will also give you white fly, which will destroy the tobacco. So I'd rather lay it fallow. We have our own, or, our own organic worm farms. We incorporate organic matter back into our farms every single year. And it's better to lay, allow them to lay fallow. I really believe in that. I learned that a long time ago. I learned that in 1999. And I've kept that going. And this is going to be our 22nd year of growing tobacco. And wow. our, our crops keep getting better and better. And it's because of not only the technology we talked about earlier, but it's about doing the right thing. And it's not, the grounds are not a profit center. I, I do one thing. I know how to grow tobacco. I'm not a bean farmer. I'm not a corn farmer. I do what I know what I'm doing, and I think that's work for me, and that's why I continue doing it that way. Okay, and on that note, let's talk about some of this new stuff you said you're, you have coming out soon. Let's talk about those new cigars. Well, we're bringing out the grandfather product of the Perdomo Reserve 10th Anniversary okay. Sun Grown. So what's unique about these two, these two particular cigars are is that a lot of our consumers were asking us, for rich tobacco with more sweetness. And what's unique about both of these cigars is we had a little more tobacco from our Jalapa farms than we normally would. And what we did is during our factory tours in 2020, we decided to hand out cigars, these cigars, to not only our retailers, but a lot of the consumers that came in. And we would just hand them these cigars and they were talking about how much they loved them and they could pick up the sweetness and so on of the tobaccos. So we were really happy with it, and uh, these are our two newest ones. Uh, we hope they'll be in, in retail stores and at Famous in, in the month of July, and uh, they're fantastic. i got to send you some. I think you're really going to enjoy them. And uh, the response, yeah, the response has been great. We've had, literally outside of our team, we've had over 500 people, 500 smokers, smoke these cigars, and the response has been phenomenal. So we're really excited about the two new Perdomo Reserve lines. And um, we're gonna retire Perdomo Reserve uh, Champagne Noir and Perdomo Reserve Champagne, the old Sun Grown. And we're coming up with the uh, new Sun Grown again in the red band, okay. and the new Maduro in the blue band. So those are our two newest ones, Gary. And uh, we're real excited about 2020 and, and continuing. And I really gotta thank you and, and thank our audience out there for all their support for us. Sure. And I got to tell you, I just want to show this ash again. Look at, look at this beautiful ash. And look how it's nice and conical. And uh, I always thought that when you get the cone, you know, it's a, a sign of a really well-made cigar. It's really rolled properly. Would you That's agree with that? Absolutely. You're 100% right. The cone is basically the lijero in the middle that's mm -hmm. holding that bunch because the guy in tube, they're made a, a perfect funnel in the middle, and he has that lijero rock solid in the center. That cigar will never burn him properly. And that's one of the things that we use. It's one of our 17 quality control steps, making sure not only the cigars um, are draw tests and they have the certain around of turns and so on, but also that the conical shape of the head on the visas are square right in the middle of the bunch, which makes guarantees the cigar is always going to burn that way. Because after we test a blend, we do a, we do a combustible test on all the different tobaccos, whether it be the fillers, the binders, or the wrappers of that particular blend of the cigar so we can guarantee that those tobaccos burn perfectly like baby powder, like that cigar you're smoking here, or the one I'm smoking, mm -hmm. which I'm gonna take my second band off. And I just tried to, <clears throat> pardon me, and I just tried to ash it, it won't come off, so I'm gonna leave it alone. But, um, you know, I, I just wanted to, before we wrap up, I just wanna ask you another thing, you know, Father's Day is coming up, and uh, I know you guys make a lot of great gift packs and stuff. You wanna make a good suggestion, uh, a good suggestion for Father's Day? Well, I, I, I think we have we have the great gift packs. Um, we have a lot of you know we have a lot of events going on that are going to be coming in for Father's Day with some specials and, and some swag product, whether it be lighters or cutters or or four packs. And uh, we always have something for somebody there, whether it be Father's Day or Christmas for anything. And uh, we're just we're just blessed with the sales. I know that I know that things have been tough 
But uh, like I said, I'm, I'm the optimist. I think we're going to get out of this. And I've been, I've, been, I've been surprised, but I think we made the right decision by not closing our facilities and, and, and keeping our consumers with their Perdomo cigars and our retailers and our catalog partners to carry our products and make sure because you can't make money if you don't have cigars and people can't smoke cigars if they don't. Uh, we've done a lot of more hygienic uh, uh, things also. Every cigar we make now are all cellophane. Um, that's a big thing for us. You don't want people touching your cigars. I have a mm -hmm. YouTube video where you see people put their cigars in their noses and, and so <laughs> on. And we want to keep everything hygiene and because we use real cellos. You can even age your cigars in your humidor with our cigars with the cello uh, on it. And because we freeze our tobacco, you'll never have a bug problem. And if you keep them in cello, if you mix them with different cigars, it might not freeze. You won't have any infestation of lacodermia. So we're trying to stay ahead of the game. And you know me, I'm a germ freak as it is anyway. Uh, How are you? I didn't know yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, I am a germ freak. I, uh, you know, we, that factory, you can eat off the floors. And we've always kept it that way. We sweep and we mop and we field day at the end. And we do that for a couple of reasons. We do it also mostly for the cleanliness and hygiene, but also to keep sick leave down for our workforce. And people like to work in clean environments. And I happen to be one of them to enjoy that. So it's very important for us. And, uh, you know, and the freezing of the product kills everything. So that, that's, that's yeah. been a blessing that we've been doing that too. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, I got to tell you, this cigar has been fantastic. It's been consistent. I'm just getting into the third act here, and it's just full. It's flavorful. It's just great with the scotch. It just opens it right up, and um, it's good with coffee, too. And I noticed you, you recommend the, the Connecticut with the coffee and the Maduro I do. the red wine, so which you mentioned I earlier. Do. I do. I, and that's all why right. I pair all these things with these different wrappers, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, remember that Perdomo cigars are available at famous-smoke.com. And while you're there, please sign up for their free cigar catalog. It's got some great deals. And for more cigar smoking advice and information, you can visit cigaradvisor.com and sign up for our email list. And you can follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. And if you like this video, then like it on YouTube if you're watching it there. And please sign up for our YouTube notifications and subscribe to the channel. And once again, I want to thank you, Nick, for coming on the show today. It was really great to have you. Gary, always a pleasure being with you, my friend. I've known you for a long time. and Yes, you have. And I know <laughs> I you're down welcome. in Miami. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and you're always welcome to come here. And we'd love to get you down to the factory in Nicaragua yeah. on our next tour. And, uh, it's been a long time. It has been a long time. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in August. We're doing a, I think we're doing yes. a car dinner together up there. So great. I'm looking forward to that. And, and my best to everybody out there. Everybody still stays healthy. And all our friends at Famous, they do a phenomenal job and everybody stays healthy over there too. And uh, let's kick this thing and get back to work. Let's do that. All right, well, thanks again, Nick. And Thank that's you, all Gary. for now. So see you next time on Hashtag Now Smoking. I'm Gary Korb and happy smokes.